Welcome back everyone. For today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the very special opening called the Balog opening. Now, most of you have probably never heard of this opening and primarily because it's a very aggressive opening that's quite risky. And generally, if you're not of a certain level, if you play it, you will lose every single game from the start. Now, we're going to feature two games that I played yesterday in the Title Tuesday event. Now, this is a prize money event held on chess.com. In the first game, I'm playing with the black pieces in this Balog opening against Alexander Rustamov. The game starts with d4, I play d6, he plays e4, and now I play this move f5. Now it's worth noting this can occur out of the other move order as well. If white plays e4, d6, d4, then you have f5 and it's a transposition. So we reach this critical position on move two where black has now played f5, moving this f pawn next to your king and creating weaknesses on this light square diagonal from d1 to h5. The game continues with pawn takes pawn, I take back, and the idea is quite straightforward for black. What you would like to do here is develop your queen, your knight, and castle your king out of the center, and eventually play for e5. So let's just say white plays some random moves like bishop e2, queen d7, let's just say h3, knight c6, c3, castles, knight to d2. Say you get a position like this, you can go e5, and black is already doing really, really well here. You've completed your initial development. You're now playing in the center of the board, and the rest should be quite straightforward. So... There is that plan. However, white also gets to play moves. And one of the big issues with pushing the pawn to f5 is how are you going to develop this bishop on f8? And additionally, you now have this weak pawn that's backwards on e7. So with this pawn, let's just say you have a different structure. For example, you get some position like, um, I'm just going to set up a position. Uh, you, you get some position like this. You can always go e6 here and develop the bishop. But in this structure where you've already played f5 so early, he can't really play for e5 because long term it does create this uh, slight weakness of pawn on e5 and if you don't play for e5 and you go e6 this pawn will always be weak on this open e5 so anyway the game continues with bishop to d3 i play queen d7 here i do not trade the bishops here because after trading the bishops and playing a move like knight to f6 white can now play this nasty move d5 which prevents me from pushing the e pawn if i push the e pawn white will simply capture the pawn with on pass on if you play g6, white can go knight to f3, bishop to g7, and now there's this very nasty move, knight to g5. Idea is quite simple. If you castle, white forks the queen and the rook here on f8 and d8. If you don't castle and you play a move like queen to d7, white now goes knight to e6, attacking the bishop on g7. And after you play a move like king to f7, white can simply play c4, creating this nice connect three with the outpost of the knight on e6. And black is struggling to develop here so instead i play queen to d7 we get knight to f3 being played here and now i go knight to f6 knight c6 is also playable but i was worried that if i play knight c6 white can now play d5 attacking the knight on c6 so instead i play knight to f6 white castles and now i play knight to c6 now one of the reasons that i also play this opening that i did not stress earlier is that rustamov is a very strong grandmaster he's somebody that i've played a lot in blitz games over the years he tends to be a very set repertoire kind of guy so when i play my king's indians i play my duchess he always has a set system against them whereas when you play the balog opening your opponent doesn't quite know what has hit them unfortunately however it is still very easy for white to play so in this position, we get rook to e1 being played by Rustamov here, and now I play bishop g4. It's worth noting that c4 is actually a much stronger move here because if white plays this move c4 and black castles, for example, white can now trade on f5 and go for the same idea with d5, the pawn on d5 guarded by the pawn on c4, and after knight to e5, knight to d4, white is once again getting a great knight on e6 here, and he's completely winning. So after c4, you, you really should trade on d3 and then play a move like d5 to prevent white from pushing. But after white plays knight to c3 and you castle here, white can now play this move c5. And the position is already really, really scary for black because if you play a move like e6, white can now go rook to b1. Let's just say you go g6. White goes b4, bishop g7, b5. Let's just say knight to a5. And now white gets this great knight on e5 here, which is protected. He can also push b6 or c6. And there's a big attack on the b and the c files towards your king on c8 here. So white is simply crushing. So you have to be very careful here. And, and additionally, even besides just the idea of rook b1, white can also go rook to e1 with ideas like knight to g5 or queen to e2, attacking this weak pawn on e6. So it's very, very critical, and it's worth noting that c4 is a very strong move. In the game, however, Rustamov plays rook to e1, another very logical move, and now I decide to play bishop g4. Now, I could have castled here, and this is actually the best move, but I was kind of worried about ideas like knight to g5 here, because after takes takes, you're worried that the knight is either getting to f7 or e6, but now black can play e5, 
and if white takes you can simply take back with the knight and your pawn structure is completely fine now you no longer have this weak pawn on e7 and if white plays d5 here attacking the knight and trying to go knight to e6 creating the outpost you have knight to b4 forking the queen on d3 as well as the pawn on d5 However, blitz game, you're trying to move quickly. This wasn't titled Tuesday, so I played bishop g4 instead, trying to pin the knight on f3. Rustamov plays h3, and now I go bishop h5. Bishop takes f3 on first glance, looks like a decent move, but after queen takes f3, black is in a lot of trouble here. If you castle your king, white can play bishop to f5, which wins the queen, because if you capture the bishop, you lose your queen. And if you play e6, white just takes, and the bishop is guarded by the rook on e1. So you can't really castle here. And if you play a move like e6, which is another move, white can just go c3, guarding the pawn on d4. And if you castle here, the same tactic applies. White can play rook takes pawn, because after queen takes rook, there is bishop f5 once again, which would be winning for white. So in this position, you don't, you can't really castle. So you can play a move like bishop e7, but after white simply plays a move like knight to d2, black castles and white plays queen to e2. Black has this big weakness on e6, and if you push e5, white can even play a move like bishop b5, pinning your knight on c6, and there's a lot of pressure on the e-file as well, so black is in a lot of trouble here. So instead, I play bishop to h5, keeping the bishop on the board. It's worth noting if white tries to break the pin with g4, you can actually play knight takes g4, because after pawn takes knight, you have queen takes pawn check, and when the king moves, you simply capture this knight on f3, and black has two extra pawns in the center of the board. So, white has to be a little bit careful here, too. So, Rustamov plays bishop e2, breaking the pin. Additionally, white now threatens to play d5, potentially, because the queen on d1 will guard the pawn on d5. I decide to castle. Rustamov plays the move pawn to d5. I trade the knight on f3. He takes back, and now I go knight to e5. And at least temporarily, I have this knight, which is outpost here. White cannot remove the knight with a knight with a move like f4 because the bishop is in the way so Rustamov plays knight c3 and now I play this very enterprising move g5 now what you'll notice here is that I have an issue the bishop and the rook are underdeveloped here additionally it's very easy for white to attack on the queen side say I play a move like I don't know h5 <coughs> white can go queen d4 king to b8 and now something like bishop to e3 here and there's a lot of pressure towards this pawn on a7 Additionally, after h5, I mean, if I don't want to leave the bishop hanging, I can also play like bishop e2, h4, bishop to e3, king to b8, and white can even play a4 here with ideas like knight b5, queen d4 still exists, and black is getting crushed on the queen side while you have no attack really on the king side. So you have to be very, very fast, and that's why in this game I play this move g5. Now the idea is very straightforward here. I'm gambiting the pawn on g5, but if white takes on g5, I can now play rook g8, activating my rook. If white moves the bishop to say e3, for example, I can play this nasty move queen takes h3 because of the pin, and white actually is in a lot of trouble here. However, white can also play a move like bishop takes f6, but after pawn takes bishop, you still have the threat of taking the pawn on h3. And if white moves the king, for example, now black can play f5 here with the idea of developing this bishop to g7 and creating a lot of threats on the dark squares, potentially. It's also worth noting that if white plays a move like bishop e2, you can go f4 to stop white from playing f4. And after knight to e4 is played, you can simply go queen g7. Threatening checkmate, if white plays bishop f3, you go bishop to e7 here with ideas like rook to f8 later on. And black should be relatively fine because of this great outposted knight on e5, which simply cannot be removed while having this open g5 for the queen on g7, as well as the rook on g8 here. So bishop takes g5 is a move, but again, keep in mind, this is obviously a blitz game. So Rustamov tries to play on instinct as well. So he plays knight to e4 here, trying to trade off the knights. Here I play h6, guarding the pawn on g5. He plays b3. Now, I think this is a mistake for a couple of reasons. In this position, what white should be trying to do is attack on this diagonal from e3 to a7. By going b3, I'm always going to be able to play bishop g7, interposing the diagonal. And additionally, it's going to take a lot of time for white to try and attack on the queen side. So I go bishop g7. He plays bishop b2. I take on e4. He takes back. Now, this is actually a mistake here. White can play this move bishop takes e5 because if I play bishop takes e5, white is this very nasty move bishop g4, winning the queen on d7. However, there is this thing called the Hikaru effect as well as the Magnus effect, and Rustamov just gladly captures on e4 immediately. I go rook df8 here with the idea of trying to stack the rooks on the f file. Rustamov plays rook to b1. Now, this move is simply a move designed to prevent me from playing knight f3, but it's not actually necessary here because if white plays a move like c4 and I go knight to f3, after takes, takes, again, I run into bishop g4. 
So rook b1 is an unnecessary move. It wastes a tempo here. Additionally, nothing is happening on the b file either. So the rook is just misplaced. I go h5 here. He plays c4. I go g4, trying to push the pawns on the king side. He plays h4. And now in this position, I play the move rook to f4. Now I play rook f4 here for a couple of reasons. First of all, I want to double stack the rook on the F file, but additionally, the only way really for white to remove the rook is to play G3. But if white plays G3, you also create a weakness on F3 long-term. So after rook F7, at some point, I'm hoping to put this knight on F3. Say white plays a move like bishop C3, I can go knight F3. And if you take with the bishop, I can actually take back with the pawn here because when white captures the bishop, I have queen H3 creating the classic Jean Batista lolly checkmate idea with queen G2. So white does have to be careful, which is why Rustamov here plays queen C2, trying not to push G3 and weaken his pawn structure. So I go rook HF8, goes rook to E2, guarding the pawn on F2. And now here I miss a great chance to win in style. I play this move G3, which is a huge mistake. What I should have played here was knight to F3 because white's king is in check. Now if white captures back with the pawn, I can trade the bishops on b2 and after rook takes b2 i can take on f3 with the idea of queen to g4 and this king is very weak on g1 and additionally with the open g file as well as the open f file black should be doing really really well so instead i play g3 again blitz game time getting low the idea behind this move is to try and create some counterplay but after takes as i realized to my horror if i play this move rook to g4 which is my initial idea White can now play this very tricky move, rook to f1, offering the trade of the rooks. And effectively, I'm lost here because if I move the rook away, there's bishop f5 winning the queen or the rook here. And if I don't move the rook, I can't really stop bishop f5 anyway. If I trade the rooks on f1 here, for example, after rook f1, king takes f1. In this position, I have no answer to bishop f5. The only way to stop bishop f5 is to play e6. But after pawn takes queen to e7, bishop to f5, rook takes g3. White is this very funny move, king to f2 essentially trapping the rook on g3 if i play queen takes h4 the obvious move i lose on the spot because e7 is check here king cannot move towards the center and when i move the king away white just makes a queen and after queen d8 queen takes d8 this is the classic back rank checkmate so this position would be losing if i play rook g4 because again after rook f1 i have nothing that i can do now i saw this during the game and i was i realized okay well i have my idea it's no good but i'll try to survive with rook f7 but here, even though I'm down a pawn, I have some hopes. I've got this great outpost at knight on e5, potentially. White doesn't really have an attack, and I control the f-file. But Rustamov finds an excellent move here with bishop to g6, attacking the rook on f7. Now, the reason this is an excellent move is because white has an extra pawn. So if white can trade down all the pieces after takes, 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 and rook e takes b2, white is simply up a pawn on the king side. He also can potentially win this pawn on h5 and have two connected pass pawns. And with only queens and rooks on the board, I have no chances to attack on the f file. And effectively, the game is over. So here I play rook f6, sword of desperation, Rustamov trades on e5, and he takes on h5. And now white is simply up two pawns on the king side. Additionally, I have two double e pawns, so surely I'm going to lose, right? However, in the game of chess, you try to play on and find opportunities. So here I go queen d6, Rustamov plays queen e4, important move because if white plays a move like bishop f3, I can still hope for a miracle with e4 here, because after bishop takes e4, queen takes g3, I have the open f file, queen is well placed on g3, I can also try to go bishop d4, bishop e5, creating mate threats in a move or two, and it's not clear cut whether white is even better anymore. Unfortunately, Rustamov plays queen e4, preventing the pawn push. I go king b8, he plays king h2 here, not queen takes e5 because then I would have rook f1 check, rook takes rook, rook takes rook, king takes rook, and bishop takes queen on e5, which would win the game. Rustamov goes king h2, I play queen c5 here, and now he plays rook e1, and I go rook f1, hoping for a miracle with queen g1 and trying to checkmate the king. Unfortunately, after rook takes, rook takes, bishop f3, as I realized during the game, if I go queen g1, king h3, queen h1, after king g4, white's king is really, really safe here on g4, and white is completely winning. The queen and the rook are actually just down at the back end of the board, doing absolutely nothing. So instead, I go a5 here, just to move to stop b4, frankly, nothing else really. Rustamov plays king h3, I check, he goes king g4, I go queen d6 here, hoping to bring the queen over, maybe create something, but realistically, the game is over. Rustamov plays queen f5, and now I go bishop f6, we get queen e6, queen d8, queen f7, some repetitions here, and now he decides to sack the rook on e5 for a sort of an unknown reason. I decide, I decide to take, play queen g8, and now he goes queen g5. Now, one of the funnier things about this position is that white is actually winning after king f4, because after queen f7, king g5, queen g8, king h6, 
White's King is super safe here on H6 here. I cannot check anywhere, really. I can check on F8, but White blockades. And White is just going to run these two pawns all the way up the board. And my Rook on H1 looks good, but it's doing nothing. There are no open files, F, E, or D files to use. So the game is over. Rostomov instead plays Queen G5. I go Queen to H7, Queen F5, Queen G7, Queen G5, Queen H7. And I decide to play Queen H8 here, not taking the draw because in title Tuesday, you sometimes need to win games. Rostomov plays H5. I play Rook one here, trying to go Rook 5 and attack the pawn on H5 here with the classic right triangle. And Rostomov makes a huge blunder here. Low on time, he plays this move King G5, which allows me to play Rook 5 winning the Queen on F5 and effectively the game. Goes on with G4. I make a check. King F4, I take. And now after Queen to H6, all I have to do is make sure that White can't get these pawns marching up the board. So I check, King G4, King C8, G3. And now after King D8, Rustamov resigns the game because my plan is very simple. I'm just going to bring my king all the way over to F6. White cannot push the pawns forward, and the queen will win the game very, very easily for me. So I win this game against Rustamov pretty early on in Title Tuesday. And now we move to the second attempt at playing the Balog opening in Title Tuesday, where I'm playing with the black pieces against Roberto Molina, and I am from Brazil. This game starts with d4, d6, e4. I play f5 again. First seven moves, exact same as the previous game. We get this position with rook to e1. I decide to play bishop g4. Now, again, same tournament. I'm not looking at the games very closely in between. So I figure it was good enough before. I'll do it again. Now, Molina plays c3. I castle. We get h3, bishop h5. And he plays this move, bishop to e2. Now, a couple of things are important to note about about chess when you're playing against your opponent psychology does matter sometimes and when I looked at Molina's openings he was using a little bit of time to play c3 and bishop e2 now these are not aggressive moves and one thing I know about the Balog opening is that you need to be aggressive with the white pieces to punish your opponent if your opponent can develop their pieces and just play normal moves for the first 10 to 15 moves generally you're going to be doing quite well so after bishop e2 I play h6 and here we get this move bishop to f4 being played by Molina now, bishop, F to, uh, bishop to f4 is a move, but it is not the best move. What Molina should have done here is he should have either played d5, forcing me to commit to taking on f3, or played b4, trying to attack on the queen side. But when he goes bishop f4, he actually only helps me finish my development, because now I play g5, attacking the bishop on f4, bishop to h2 is played, and now I go pawn to g4. Now, what is the difference between this and the other game? It's quite clear. White has not taken more space in the center. He's developed the bishop to f4 and h2, but now the bishop on h2 is staring at a closed diagonal, and I'm getting an attack on the g file very, very quickly. Molina takes. I take back with the bishop here. Not the knight, because after knight takes bishop g3, I can't, I'm going to need to waste a move moving my bishop before I can get h5, h4. And if I play rook g8, there's still really no threat on the g file, because the knight on g4 is simply in the way. So I take with a bishop, we get knight bd2, I play rook to g8, hoping to play bishop h3, but also mainly just keeping an eye on this pawn on g2. Knight f1 is played, and now I go e6 here, and this stops d5, but also now I can swing the queen over to g7 and cre create more mating threats. We get knight to e3, and now I play this move h5 here, knight d2 is played, I trade, and now I go bishop h6. And already here, I'm doing very, very well because I have an open g file. My bishop on h6 is super well placed. I can even go rook f8 and play on the f file. And this is not how the Balog opening should go for white. So we get rook a d1 played by Molina. I go rook to g6 here, trying to line up a double stack or even potentially the classic triple stack with the rook on g8 and the queen on g7. Knight f1 is played, I go rook to g8, targeting the pawn on g2, and he has to play this very sad move g3. White would love to blockade with bishop g3, but after h4, you either have to lose the bishop or you have to yield and capture, but after captures, rook g2, king h1, there's probably just a checkmate with check, king h2, check, king h3, and then e5, create a discovered check, and after queen g4, queen takes queen, this would be game over. So... In this position, you have to play the very sad move g3, which basically means that now you have a dead bishop on h2, which is doing absolutely nothing. I continue with knight g4. Now, the idea behind knight g4 is not so much to capture the bishop, but mainly to put pressure on the pawn on f2 while also guarding the pawn on e6, because you'll notice the pawn on e6 is under attack. So I play knight g4 here. We get knight to f3, and now I shift shift my focus by going rook f6 because now if white ever moves the knight you lose the pawn in f2 and you can't dislodge this knight from g4 either you can maybe try knight e3 here but after takes takes and queen g7 something really bad is about to happen on the g and the f files so we get knight one d2 i go rook g to f8 double stack of the rooks on the f file a lot of pressure 
We get rook to f1 played by Melina, and now I just take because if white captures with either the rook or with the queen, you lose the knight. So he has to take back with the knight, and now I crash through with rook takes pawn. We trade the rooks. He sadly has to sack the queen. You'd love to move the queen elsewhere, but after rook takes h2, you're just down a piece. So he trades, and now I go e5 here. Basically an idea to open up the diagonal here. Also, by playing e5, if white takes, I can take with the knight. Now the knight is very quickly jumping into the game, whereas from c6 right here, you can't take the pawn, you can't go to e5, and going to e7 is fine too, but it's a little bit slower. So I play e5 here. Melina plays knight to f3. Now I go pawn to e4. Goes knight h4. I play queen g4, attacking the rook on d1. Rook to e1 is played, and now I play knight to e7 trying to go knight f5 or knight d5 and just push this pawn on e4 to e3. He goes knight g2, I play knight to f5, he goes rook f1 here, and I play this move d5. Just a quiet waiting move, consolidating my center. There are many ways to win here, but there's no need to rush it. So I go d5, we get knight to f4, and now I play this move h4 here, and the game is effectively over. I, there are many ways to win, but h4 is one of the cleanest because if white takes back with the pawn, I go e3 with the tickle check, King has no squares on the G file or after E2. E1 is the only square. And after Queen takes H4 check, I will win either the Bishop on H2 or the Rook on F2 if white blocks. So Molina goes Knight to E2. I play E3. We get King to E1. And now I play this move. Pawn takes Pawn. Bishop to G1. And now Queen E4. Threat, threat mating checkmate in, in, I guess, two or three with Queen V1. White can't really stop it. You can maybe go Knight F4 to prevent it. But after Queen C2, now I'm going to checkmate on D2. Or you're going to have to sacrifice a lot of material to prevent the checkmate. And it's simply hopeless. So Molina resigns the game. So what have we learned from the Balak opening? What we've learned is that it's a very sharp opening. If you're playing it and your opponent, if you're playing with the black pieces and your opponent doesn't know how to respond to it and they're a little bit passive or they're not a very aggressive tactical player, you can get away with it. And in this second game, as we saw against this I am Roberto Molina from Brazil, he was a little bit tentative. He didn't really want to go after him. He's a much more technical player, likes positional grinds. And because of that, he made a couple of inaccurate moves. And right away, I was able to wrestle the initiative away from him and win this game very, very convincingly. Now, in the first game also, a little bit different situation against Rustamov, but he wasn't he wasn't completely ready to just go after me and try to blow me off the board. And because of that, I was completely fine out of the opening. So if you're playing against somebody who's not a super aggressive tactical player, I do think the Bal Balog, I was about to say Balrog again, the Balog opening is definitely a decent choice. At any rate, even if you don't play the opening because you're pushing a pawn super early, I hope you did enjoy this video. I hope you learned something, something from it. Make sure to hit the subscribe button below if you have not already, and we'll be back bringing you more great content on YouTube very, very soon. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See y'all. See y'all. Bye.